Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, out here in the shop today, just kind of messing around and playing with my Kearney Trekker Model 2D um, rotary head milling machine that I picked up a little while back. And I am uh, wanted to do a couple of things with it today. Uh, number one, I want to replace the switch up here on it that turns this thing on and off. This is not the original switch that's in here. And while it works, uh, I wanted to get it back a little bit more like it was when it was new. And the other thing I want to do is do some more testing on here, uh, just making sure everything is in the kind of tolerances or close to the tolerances of what it was. You know, we know this isn't a new machine, but I want to see, you know, how everything runs. The machine looks like it has not had an excessive amount of wear on it, uh, but I want to do a few tests. And I actually have a sheet from K&T that they used to test these when it was new that shows a bunch of the tests. Uh, that we can do and compare to what it would have is now compared to what it was like when it was new. But first, uh, let's see about swapping this uh, switch out up here. So up here on the head of the machine, you can see all the switches that are used to control it. Uh, I have it unplugged right now so the power is not on. I, when I'm doing this, I want to make sure I don't have any electricity in here. But you can kind of see there's the spindle rotation left and right uh, in the center centers off. So it's a three position switch. This is the one that's not original. These other ones I think are original switches. We have one for the table feed where you basically just turn it on and off. And uh, there's also uh, some for the pumps. There's a coolant pump and an air pump on this. And again, just uh, switch them on and off. This is a switch uh, that uh, has been replaced and I've had it out and looked at it, but basically there is, you can see there's a big washer on here. Uh, this is a, what I think a half inch stem on the center of this three position switch, which is like the other ones, a standard. This is what you can find in today's world. Uh, originally, it had a three quarter inch hole in here and it still does have a three quarter inch hole in there. You can see where we bushed it up or somebody did. And if you look at the old uh, sales literature and stuff, you can kind of see there's a switch in there. It is similar to the other ones. It has a ball on the end of it and there's a slot that it rolls in. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not, uh, but I knew what the switch looked like. And from that, I basically just went on a search trying to find an old switch because we couldn't find anything new that would really look appropriate or fit it properly. And after a lot of searching on eBay, I was able to find uh, this particular switch right here. And I believe that this is what was in this machine originally. So again, you see it has that ball on the end. Uh, it switches over, goes back to the center, switches over to the left, and uh, so on. And this was, I think, uh, what's in here. It's got a three-quarter inch stem. Uh, and this one is a three-position switch. Uh, this one here, I think, was actually made for a three-phase motor. It actually has three sets of contacts in here, so you would actually run all three leads through it. Uh, on this one, I think we only need one pole, uh, but it is the right switch on the outside. You probably could have got a more simpler version of this, and I imagine that's what was in here originally. Now, how did I find it? Uh, through lots of searching on the internet, and particularly on eBay. I, I probably looked, I don't know how many hundreds and hundreds of switches on there, just putting out a, a search that would pull up, you know, uh, three position switches. And I eventually found one that looked right, and I was able to find the maker name. This is made by A-H and H USA. Uh, I don't know what that stands for, but once I got a company name, I was able to do a more specific search, and I was able to pick up several of these that were for sale, and uh, I bought one hoping that it would work, and I think that it is, and this is what we're going to put in here for today. So we're gonna start by just taking the screws off of this and taking this brass plate off the front, big heavy duty uh, brass piece on the front that everything mounts to. That would uh, not fly in today's world. Because of expense, uh, I don't guess there's anything wrong with a brass plate on here. Uh, might want to have a non-conductive material for these to mount to. Probably would put it on plastic or something today, but uh, as long as the machine's grounded, it shouldn't shouldn't matter. So we're going to definitely keep that beautiful brass plate in there because it's real cool. So let's go ahead and see if we can get this out. And when you do, you can see your wires and stuff in here. Uh, that was a little 
piece on there that just came off and I'm going to let me get a pair of pliers. I'm going to take this one out and see if that other one will fit in there. All right, so we get that out. You can see the size of the hole. There's a big washer behind it. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I think I will just take a picture of that and see how it goes. So it looks like in the center we've got actually three leads going to it and one on each side. This is basically the power in the center. And when you flip the switch over, it's going to uh, put the power, make a circuit that goes between either this, these two poles and these two poles. Let's uh, just see how this uh, switch fits that. So that goes right in there. The big washer or big nut on the front. And I think it will close in there. I got that other switch behind it, but I think it's going to just barely fit. So uh, I think we're good. So uh, I'm going to go get my meter. I've already checked this switch. And when you flip the switch over to the right, it actually makes a connection to these screws over here when you flip it. To the left, these uh, are connected. And that kind of makes sense because there's a piece in there. So when I flip it this way, it's making a connection on that side and back and forth. So I want to make sure. I want to see how this one is. I'm not sure if it's going to be the same. Uh, let me get my meter and we'll check it real quick. So just got a meter here. I've got it set on the ohms. And whenever you make a connection, you got continuity it beeps. So uh, we're going to sit here and check this real quick. So I'm going to go from this one, this one, the switch is off. And we actually got continuity probably through the motor uh, or through the windings. So I'm going to have to actually disconnect these to check that switch. So I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to uh, put some, write down all the numbers on these and get a diagram and then we'll go from there. Give me just a minute. All right, we're going to just check these, so no connection, no connection. We flip the switch. I think that these two are going to be, have a connection through them. So we got the beep, no beep in this direction. So we'll go the other direction and again, there we go. And nothing in that direction. So. All right, we've confirmed our switch is set up the same way. So we'll go ahead and wire up the switch up top. So again, up here, we've got three poles in here, or three different connectors. Uh, I'm gonna flip the switch toward me so it'll be connecting these two back here. And again, we can come in here with our own meter. Got a connection there. Notice that one does not connect. That one doesn't connect, but these two connect. Those two connect. So again, I don't need all three of these poles. I only need one of them. It doesn't matter which one I use on these, uh, but the switch is the right type of switch on the, on the face. That's the main thing I was worried about. So let me go ahead and we will get these wired up and I'll be bring you back here in a minute. All right, got the switch installed. So I see behind it. Let's see if we can get it all back in here. It's pretty tight down there on the bottom side here. All right, so I think we got it. Anytime I do anything electrical, I kind of hit it with the back of my hand just to make sure there's no electrons flowing through there. It looks good. And we're going to try it out. 
spindle is going good. It's rotating in the right direction. And reverse it the other direction. That is an original type switch uh, that was in here. Looks a lot better, looks more uh, authentic to the machine. And another thing I like about this is that with the old switch that was on here, you could easily just go from left to right. You push it and it goes all the way over. This switch here, it's got a little momentary stop in the center, so it'll prevent you from real quickly going from one side to the other. It will stop, make you stop in the center. So we click it on, I can't push it. Now after just a second, it'll push over, but when I come right back to it, it's gonna keep me from slamming it over into the other direction, uh, which is a big improvement because uh, with the old switch, I actually uh, blew a fuse one time when I tried to reverse the, uh, the spindle. It just drew too many amps for just a split second and it blew a fuse inside and those are replaceable fuses so I had to replace it. That will prevent that from happening uh, in the future. So big improvement. I like it. Well guys, I'm happy with how that turned out. We got our spindle uh, switch replaced back to the way it was originally. Uh, it looks more authentic to the machine, and yeah, while the other one worked, I like the way this one works better. And, uh, and again, being somewhat of a purist, I want this machine to be as original as possible. And that is the original type switch that goes in here, and it just, in my mind, it makes it look a little bit better. Uh, like I said, functionally, yeah, probably doesn't matter, but looks, looks are important. So uh, that's what we got. Uh, I do want to do some testing on this machine, but I'm going to wait to do that in another video. I was looking at doing that. I've actually got some new, I say new, new to me, collets that came in for this. I bought some used ones from a gentleman, uh, but they're soaking in evapo rust right now, getting cleaned up. And uh, I want to get those cleaned up and do some more spindle testing and some other tests on this. Uh, but I'm not going to have time to get that done today because uh, those aren't quite ready to put on the machine yet. So we'll be doing that down the road. Also, now that I've got some collets, uh, maybe we can make a cut with this, uh, put some, some stuff in here and actually put some end mills in here and actually start making some cuts and playing with it. Uh, other things kind of going on this machine in the near future, I did find a chairing attachment for it. And again, I need to get it mounted and set up. Uh, not quite ready to do that yet either, but once we can kind of get to the point, we can do that. I also am, have made a deal. I haven't picked everything up yet. It's going to probably be a month or two before I can, uh, but I made a deal to, to buy some other uh, parts, pieces, and attachments that go to this machine from a, a gentleman in another place. So uh, once those come in, we'll have a few more things that we can play around with this machine. And uh, I've, I've actually... If everything comes together, I think I've got three out of the four of the attachments that go on here. I'm gonna have the, the chairing attachment, which will kind of make let you do a round bottom in a, in a uh, piece that you're milling. I've also found a right angle attachment and a universal attachment, which allows you to put a cutter at, at different angles or at a right angle. Uh, the only attachment I haven't found for this yet is the uh, slotting attachment or the shaper attachment. Uh, that goes on these and uh, that one is probably going to be a little bit tougher to find but hopefully I'll be able to find one one of these days and uh, hoping to to pick up a few more collets and things to kind of round out my collection there. I've got a few different sizes now but I don't have them all but I'm getting closer to having a, a pretty much a full set of stuff on here. It's just a matter of digging around and finding it and, and you guys out there have been very helpful. Actually I've been contacted by several of you guys uh, that, that have had some parts and pieces for these machines and didn't need them and uh, were willing to, to share them with me, uh, either through a couple of them were gifts, a couple of them I, I purchased. But anyway, it's been really nice to be able to uh, find a few things that we need for this milling machine. And looking forward to getting in here and doing some cuts with it and really showing this thing off and what you can do. Not quite there yet, but getting close. And, but that is going to be a wrap for today's video. Uh, like I said, we got this up here knocked out. That's one other little thing checked off of my list of what I wanted to do for this machine. Felt fortunate that I was able to find the right switch. Uh, it was 
it took a lot of, lot of digging and a lot of searching to find one. Now that I know what I'm looking for, they're a little bit easier to find, but, uh, but was happy I was able to find one of those and get that in here. So that's good and moving forward on it. Guys, uh, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. It helps out with the algorithms over on YouTube a lot. And I appreciate you doing that if you, if you don't mind. Um, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. And a big huge thank you to all the supporters of the site who support through Patreon and PayPal and other means. Uh, we couldn't do everything we do here without your help. And with that, guys, we will catch you on the next video again. Thanks for watching. Thank you.